looks better. Right. in the fact that there's roadworks going on so we've got a bit more space here so um, if everybody could keep walking around uh, can I have the speakers uh, down the front here please speakers anybody speaking please come down to the front too hard yeah, to
is the time. Now is the time to recognise that this is what a car-based transport system does to our health. It's like a cigarette that we smoke each and every day. Now is the time to learn from one of the great health challenges of the past, cholera. How was it fixed? It was not fixed with encouragement. It was not fixed with education. The solution was infrastructure, good pipes, good sewers. It's not sexy, it wasn't visible, but it was essential for the health fix of the day. And now is the time to think boldly and rationally about the links between the budgets for health and the budgets for transport to rebalance our travel sign. And now is the time to base your decisions upon evidence. When you see your doctors, Mr. Hammond, you don't want them to make their decisions based on hunches or what the man in the street thinks. You want him to base his decisions on evidence. And I work in evidence-based medicine and I have some evidence for you. This is not fake news. Where does this evidence come from? It comes from your experts at Public Health England and NICE. So listen up, Mr Hammond. Hear what they told you about the vast sums that you could save on the NHS budget. How can you do that? By investing in infrastructure to switch short motor trips to active travel, to walking and cycling. And what does that achieve? It achieves a reduction in deaths, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, depression, and even cancer. Yes, really, Mr. Hammond. Physical inactivity contributes directly to one in six deaths. I'm going to repeat that. Physical inactivity contributes to one in every six deaths, and it's costing business and society 6.4 billion each and every year. What did the Chief Medical Officer have to say about that? He said that active travel is like a miracle cure. And the cure that our nation needs is absolutely clear. We need safe, connected, convenient networks of cycling and walking routes that stretch right across our cities and neighbourhoods. So, now is the time. Now is the time to find the eye for investment in the cycling and walking investment strategy. You know, Mr Hammond, that you need the rewards and the savings. You know it needs the investment. Just encouraging others to do their bit while throwing money into easing car journeys is not going to cut the mustard. Now is the time to put 10% of the transport budget into travel. Now's the time to get those great returns and see a happier, healthier nation. Don't delay, Mr. Hammond. The time is now. London is compared to the rest of the UK. I know it doesn't feel lucky right now, with two pedestrians and three cyclists dead this week, five sets of families and friends devastated. But London is lucky compared to the rest of the UK. After the deaths of people cycling at Bow Roundabout and on previous Mayor Beryl Boris Johnson's magic blue paint, campaigns including the 40,000 who signed London cycling campaigns, Love London Go Dutch Expedition, brought a step change in the way cycling was treated in London. Johnson started out saying that the infamous Elephant and Castle roundabout was fine if you had your wits about you. He didn't see physical protection for cycling as important. Those deaths and the protests that followed changed that stance, thankfully. Johnson and his commissioner delivered the first protected, proper cycling tracks on main roads, one right here, where those cycling can ride separately safely from motor vehicles. They are safer and important that they feel safer. And that's what gets people cycling. 
With the first schemes in, we're starting to just see what cycling in London and other UK cities could be like in the future. London has made its first baby steps to join the list of cities, rising to rival the Dutch. Where cycling feels safe enough, most people will do it. We're lucky because we have schemes we can see and more on the way that show that if you build it, they do come. You only need to stand next to the cycle tracks on Blackfriars Bridge or at Oval or at the embankment in the morning rush hour to see this. 70% of peak traffic on Blackfriars Bridge is people cycling on the track there now. More people than ever before move along the embankment because of the cycle superhighway there. These are TfL's figure that the government wants to ignore. If you build it, they do come. You are here today to prove that. We know this from the Dutch. It took them less than 20 years to reach mainstream levels of cycling from the early 1970s when they began. And they got there by concentrating on one thing, creating a high quality network of cycle routes that were separated from most traffic, allowing loads of people to get where they want to go, feeling safe cycling. If you route cyclists round the houses or keep them in narrow, scary lanes, only the fit and fearless cycle. We can see that all over Britain every day. But we also now have the clear evidence that if you build good cycling in the infrastructure, they do come, even here in Britain. They're building it in Barcelona right now, in Berlin and Bogota, and they are coming. So if you build it in Birmingham, they will come. They're building it right here in London, and they are coming despite the weather. If you build roads and not cycle tracks, of course, the cars come instead. And that's what our current Minister for Transport appears to favour, road building. But all that leads to is more cars, more pollution, more inactivity. Cyclists, to graving, they seem to be just something to be thought out of the way. This is a minister who has fought, we understand, against the cycle superhighway right here outside Parliament. Because it must be darn inconvenient to park the limo in when there are bloody cyclists everywhere. Yes, bloody cyclists. Despite the tragedy that a handful of us end up dead each year, we are still lucky here in London. Because that handful is outnumbered more and more each year. By delivery riders getting through the city quicker than cars and vans can. By parents on school runs with their kids in the front of their cargo bikes, giggling on the cycle superhighway. And by so many of us, we now outnumber cars across much of central London. People cycle in London, not because it's cheapest or healthiest or fastest form of road transport, but because it feels safe. We are lucky because we're winning here. More and more of us cycle every year, and fewer and fewer of us end up like Anita Suit or Carla Roman or Ben Whale. Build it, and they come. And that's how you keep the city healthy and moving. So we are hugely lucky in London, despite a few of us each year being very unlucky. It's the rest of the UK where the true tragedy lies where the government claims they're spending more than ever on cycling. But Cycling UK says that amounts to just two pints of milk per head. Two pints of milk. Where they claim they're going to double cycling by 2025, while simultaneously embarking on the huge road building spree. Cool. We're lucky in London because we can cycle pretty safely mostly, and we increasingly do. Think today of the cities, towns and counties where cycling is something few people do, where the only infrastructure serves to keep you out of motorist way, where pavements and crosses are non-existent for pedestrians. If the government is serious about doubling cycling, then what does it need to do? It's simple, spend much more money on it. We know from the DFC's own figures that even spending on the rubbish cycle scheme the UK has done so far has already proven better value than spending on any other mode of transport. So if you want to tackle pollution, if you want to tackle health, and if you want to keep us all moving, spend money on cycling. Because if you build it, they will come. If the government sticks to its plan and spends the spare change down the back of its sofa on cycling, you simply will not get conditions safe enough for most people to cycle. You won't get any more bloody cyclists. But you will get more pollution, more congestion, more inactivity related to ill health, more heart disease, more high blood pressure, more diabetes. And for those of you brave enough to cycle in cities without segregated cycle roads, alongside lethal lorries and huge blind spots, yes, you will get more tragedies. My message to the government is that, spend on cycling. My message to London is that the London Cycling Company will continue pushing the mayor, his new commissioner, Anthony Hill, to fulfil his pledges to us, triple the cycle superhighways, fix the worst fence junctions, a mini Holland in every borough. But I want to finish with a message to the country. 
In London, we have fought for cycle tracks, for safer junctions, for better crossings, and we're still fighting. So what will the rest of the UK do? As we ask the government for 10% for cycling, it's time to ask ourselves what we are prepared to do when they say no. It took the deaths of Bow and the protests that followed to get London where it is today. If we want safer cycling across the UK, do not let anyone die in vain. And don't let them forget what their inaction is doing to our lungs, to our streets, to our NHS.
Hi everyone. Um, in the uh, 30 years I've cycled the streets of London, uh, I am older than I look, uh, I've had my share of collisions. And in recent years I've, I've attended and treated a number of crash victims. The tragic events of this last week, we've had three cyclist deaths in four or five days, have reminded us of the fact that London streets are literally lethal to cyclists. But that's not why I'm here to speak to you today. As Catherine said, I work as a consultant for spiritual pediatrician and a scientist in London. The focus of my clinical work is the, the health of the lungs of the children of the city. And I've done a fair bit of academic research into the impact of air pollution on health. Polluting vehicles release submicroscopic carbon dust that damages the lungs and knock on effects on health throughout the body, on the brain, on the heart, on cancer. You heard it all earlier on from Biddy. Our research confirms what you'd expect. The levels of airborne pollution are far higher during rush hour and along busy roads. The London cyclists have high levels of carbon particulates in their lungs than other London commuters. And that city dwellers are more prone to lung infection, to asthma, to cardiac disease than other, uh, other, than other, than other people in the city, than other people. That. Evidence from a report called uh, Every Breath We Take that was uh, published by the Royal College of Physicians and Royal College of Pediatricians indicated that 40,000 excess deaths per year in the UK were caused by air pollution. It's the reason that I moved out of London when I started a family. It's the reason that I still work here, try and make a difference. London commuters Cyclists or not are dying violently at more than one a month due to underinvestment in cycling infrastructure. For a football stadium full of citizens of this country dies every year because of air quality that routinely breaks EU regulations. But don't worry, because the government's done something about that. They've addressed it through Brexit. <laughs> After Brexit, we won't be bound by EU regulations on air pollution. So we won't be breaking them anymore. But while the UK spent a pound per capita per year in the UK on cycling and walking, the Dutch spent 24 times that. And with that in mind, and I'm coming to the end, so don't worry, with that in mind, we urge our Majesty's uh, Treasury to commit to increasing spending to 10% of transport funding by 2020. It's only by proper investment that we can redu reduce this horrendous death toll in our great city. So I'd like you to all, please, to tell your friends, to speak up, to keep riding, and encourage this government to do something to stop this carnage. Thank you.
I repeat, this should not happen. Wills for Wellbeing want this network, and so do I. Yeah? So that then people will cycle. Families, children, grandparents will all be able to cycle together to work, to school, to the cinema, wherever they are going. We want segregated cycle lanes and cycle parking suitable for all types of people who want to cycle. They might be cycling a tricycle, they might be on a tandem, they might be on a recumbent, a cargo bike. There's lots of different cycles out there and there's lots of different people who want to cycle. For some disabled people, Scott. 
I don't know where you are now, but it was brilliant to have your voice here as well. I've gathered, somewhat despairingly, to remember the people who have been killed on our roads while they're walking and while they're cycling. And it really shouldn't be like this. We've just heard Scarlet. Where's Scarlet? She, she's just there. Scarlet, you read those names beautifully. You made me want to cry. And it made me remember the reason that I got into politics in the first place. A child was killed on the way to school in the area where I live in Islington. Her buggy went under the wheels of a heavy goods vehicle and her mother was blamed in the media for having allowed it to happen. It was never the fault of the mother pushing the, the wheel, the, the, the push chair. We have a road system that has systemic dangers built into it. We all make mistakes. We all do things that are maybe not completely sensible. And we do them when we're walking, we do them when we're riding our bikes, we do them at the wheel of vehicles. And the problem is that our road system does not allow anyone to make a mistake. I know every day when I cycle to City Hall from Islington, I know where all the potholes are, and I cross my fingers that I am not close past by a bus or a lorry as I go past the location of those potholes. that is unable to continue because 
between air pollution and the way we manage our roads. Thank you. I've got something. 
like to read out from um, somebody that knew Carla Roman. It was a, a man called Dylan who used to go out with Carla. Um, Dylan's sisters here and some of Carla's friends and work colleagues are here as well. And I know that I, I did say to them that they want to say anything and I know that they are truly broken and they can't speak. But I'd like to read this out from Dylan. Carla was a beautiful person inside and out. She will forever be in my heart and I will cherish every moment we shed together. And that's just two people that I've read statements out from. Two people out of the five that were killed this week. There are five sets of loved ones, families and friends who are grieving so hard at the moment. And those deaths could have been prevented if this government would just spend a decent amount of money on infrastructure and if attitudes of drivers were to change. Unfortunately, being on social media and making comments, I'm absolutely horrified at some of the comments made by people saying, well, should they be wearing high vis or a helmet? Well, Ben Wales, who was 32 years old, father of two young children, was wearing a helmet and he was wearing high vis. And as Caroline mentioned about the state of the roads, he hit a pothole and he skidded on the mud with our poor road conditions and that's when he fell and he got hit and he got dragged and that's when he died. This government needs to wake up. This government needs to spend money on infrastructure so that people are stopped being killed and that families' lives are not ripped apart by these awful incidents. Can I just thank everybody for coming today? It really is appreciated. We have had some good media attention about this, and I really, really hope that the politicians take note and take on board what is being said. I'd like to thank all the speakers that have come along today. I know that we have been pushing really hard in London and we are getting somewhere, but it's the rest of the country. We all need to work together to help everybody around the rest of the country to change what has gone on. And please don't forget the words from Tamas. Please tell the people around you that you love them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Some over here. Guys, we got some more people over here. Anybody else willing to lie down? Wanting to volunteer to lie down with you? Any funny things there? We need more here on this side. We need more time. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Victoria Lebrun.